Another aspect of the new actors, foundations, several uh, of the previous speakers mentioned their growing role from the Gates Foundation to many other old actors that are very active in the development space. But I would submit what is particularly interesting is what uh, somebody that uh, many of you may be familiar with, Mike Green, uh, in a recent meeting, he was talking about posses. The coalition of willing of different actors, civil society organizations, foundations, sometimes organizations like the bank, that get together for a specific objective. Like, for instance, malaria no more. They get together to deliver a specific result that typically has to be something very specific and hopefully achievable. And then they disband themselves after they achieve that, hopefully. So it's a different model of organization, but I would argue that they are going to become more and more relevant. So this is point number one. As you can see, I have one minute and a half for four points. So uh, the other four points, very quickly, financial weakness at the core. I think what we are seeing now in terms of the financial crisis that, of course, is started uh, with the Lehman Brothers episode in its more uh, dramatic moments, it's nothing new in the sense that uh, we know that financial crises associated with banking crises typically take a long time to unwind themselves. But the sovereign debt crisis in Europe poses governance issues for the governments of the region that are kind of unique in the post-World War II period. And we can envisage some very dramatic scenarios. One prediction I can make, because based on the experience in the past, is that official development assistance budgets are going to suffer. They are already suffering. The UK is a little bit of an exception, uh, some of the Nordic countries, but overall, we are seeing already significant impact, and if anything, I would argue, we're going to see even more of that. And it will come together with pressure for the results agenda that I guess, uh, I don't remember if it was Rajesh, some, somebody just mentioned that it's something that it's becoming very important in the dialogue. And I have nothing against the results agenda. I think it's an important agenda. But it has to be balanced because sometimes, if you focus only on short-term results, you may be missing many, many important uh, goals ahead of you in the development agenda. Rise of citizen voice and power, well, you know this much better than I, from Occupy Wall Street, the Arab Spring. The questions that it raised for us are very interesting. For instance, if you look at the Arab Spring, and if we look, for instance, I could uh, present a, a slide without the name of the country and give you some figures in terms of investment in education, investment in health, good macroeconomic situation. One of the leaders in the so-called doing business agenda and if I were to ask you, what country is this? The answer is Tunisia. So here is a country that looks very good on paper. But what was happening? Well, one of the main issues was the mismatch between the expectations of the youth population that are relatively well educated, but with skills that are not absorbable by the private sector. And that creates a very explosive combination in terms of mixed expectations. What is happening in Europe also put everybody on a radar alert because in a country like Spain with 40% youth unemployment, you can imagine how tensions are going to uh, increase. So 
Change in role of, of civil society organization development space. Yes, I think that uh, there are many opportunities, particularly to enhance transparency and accountability agenda. And there are partnerships. I know that there are concerns from civil society organizations or NGOs becoming, let's say, agents of aid delivery. But I think there are opportunities also. How you balance this is for each organization to uh, identify. From the point of view of the bank, and this is the last point, if you have not seen, take a look at the speech that my boss, Bob Zelik, did in April about a new social contract for development, where he basically makes the point that the bank is going to embark in a very different uh, approach with respect to engagement with civil society organizations, with respect to its own treatment of data, so actually, we approach this in, as of last year in a totally different manner. It's what we call open data. So all data sets of the bank now are open for free on the web. You may not find them because our web is not very good, but uh, we are trying to improve it. Uh, and also what we call open access to information. Actually, the bank is the first multilateral organization that adopted access to information policies based on the Indian and the United States policy. And these approaches basically mean that we have now what we call a negative list approach. What does this mean? Everything is open to the public unless explicitly identified by, for instance, an executive director says, well, this is confidential information. But it's a very different approach from the past where it was a positive list approach. Only those things that we identify were open to the public. Now everything is open. If for some reason somebody in the governance structure does not want that to be open, it has to explain why. And then any person or organization can come and say, no, I would dispute this, I would like to have access. And there is an independent consulting uh, mechanism to uh, present this case. So these are some of the things on how we are approaching. But pretty much, I think that the stage of change is very dramatic. And just to leave with you, uh, Isabel mentioned a, an interesting quote in the morning uh, when she had a brief intervention. There is a sign in a Norwegian meteorological uh, station called Jan Mayan that I think that describes very well the state of thinking with respect to development at this point in time. The sign says the following. Theory is when you understand everything but nothing works. Practice is when everything works but nobody understands why. <laughs> at this station, Theory and practice are united, so nothing works and nobody understands why. <laughs> Thank you.